Hello, my name is Samantha Parsley, and for my favorite thing presentation, I am choosing the concept of apparent motion, which is the appearance of real motion in the sequence of still images. Apparent motion is when stimulus separated by location and time are actually perceived as a single moving stimulus from one location to another. This includes optical illusions with varying shapes and colors, neon signs that indicate a false motion, and even cartoons and stop motion films. So how does this illusory concept work in our brains? Well, according to early research on apparent motion, when an image stimulates the retina, the eye transmits the image to the brain as an array of tiny points with various brightnesses. The brain then compares each point to every point in its succeeding frame. By means of complex computations, the brain finally discerns the one set of match points composing of a single object that has changed positions or moved. Our brains have been playing into apparent motion for years due to our brain's tendency to fill in the gaps of familiar stimulus. The thing is that apparent motion tends to follow the principle of the shortest path constraint, in which the illusion tends to occur along the shortest path for both time and distance of the two stimuli. So, say if I had a sticky note and I wanted to make it appear as if a dot was moving as such. I would want to draw the dot close to the position of the succeeding one to demonstrate a smooth and a full motion. Now, if I replace the dot one on the left hand side of the page, followed by a dot in the middle, and finally a dot on the right side as such, When I flip the sticky note, the dot wouldn't appear to be moving. It would simply appear as one dot on the left, one dot in the middle, and one on the right. If each image differs only slightly than the one before, then our visual systems can perceive motion. If the successive picture differs greatly, then the optical illusion will be destroyed. Optical illusions are the primary way apparent motion is demonstrated. There are three types of optical illusions. The first being psychological illusions, like after images, follow bright lights and adapting stimuli of excessively longer alternating patterns. For example, a Hermann's grid, in which viewers can see black dots flash in between the squares when the image is still completely still. Literal illusions are illusions that produce an image from the combination of other objects or images, like in this painting that's depicting a group of soldiers in the snow, or possibly a face of an older man. Or what about this famous optical illusion in which viewers have reported seeing both a duck and a rabbit? Or what about this formation of birds that was captured that conveniently made a smiley face? Finally, cognitive illusions arise from assumptions about the world leading to unconscious inference. Street artists far and wide will create three-dimensional looking scenes on a two-dimensional surface. If onlookers didn't know any better, they would think they were about to start free-falling into the unknown. Different forms of apparent motion stimulate different brain areas. For example, the penile illusion activates the medial superior temporal area in the brain that detects motion. Since the penile illusion depicts illusory rotation, the brain is going to perceive it as an actual motion. In the inferior temporal cortex lays the fusiform face area, which is part of the human visual system that is specialized for facial recognition. Literal illusions that depict faces stimulate this area, even if there are not physical faces in the image.